what do I put on the floating shelves? I've got one picture, I'm thinking maybe like a dangly plant. I'm open to ideas because I just don't know how to style them. I've had lots of questions about my health, specifically my period issues and things that I have been facing. <laughs> So I don't know if I've broken it, but all I know is right now it's broken. Hi guys, Re here from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. How is 2023 treating you so far? I must admit, for us, it's been a pretty chilled, slow start. We live in Wales and my children didn't break up from school until the 23rd of December. So they don't actually go back to school till a week today, something like the 10th. So we've been having a super chillaxed, slow paced kind of few days. I'm doing a lot of kind of pottering. I have been doing some work. I've been getting up to work a bit before the children get up, doing a little bit when my husband gets home, but it's been a really nice change of pace. And I've been getting a few jobs done that just need doing and I never get around to doing. Do you know what? I've got another few to do today and I thought I would share them with you, some little organization bits that I want to get done. And I know you guys love a little bit of organization. So we're going to do a little bit of that. By the way, <laughs> my living room, I'm still getting used to it without the tree. Isn't it weird like how bare and spacey everything feels as soon as you get rid of the Christmas decorations, which if you wanted to see us getting more organized after Christmas, you can watch this video after you've seen this one. Um, anyway, so it was Bella's birthday, which you can watch all about in this birthday vlog. Um, but for her birthday, she had a bike, which sadly the weather has been appalling. So we've not actually, she's not actually been out on it yet, poor child. It's literally just rained every day. Um, anyway, so, but on top of that, she had birthday money and Christmas money, because her birthday is so close to Christmas, from friends and family. And there was talk, I think I was asking on Instagram stories because I want to keep it quiet from the children about whether I should get them a switch. So William would like one for his birthday and Bella was bought one out for her birthday money. So just looking for recommendations really, any kind of good games and things. I have downloaded the parental control app, which is really, really good, really pleased with that. But if you've got any switch games that you enjoy as a family, that are really, really worth it, equally ones just to avoid, then um, I'm a little bit of a newbie to all the kind of gaming -y type stuff. So we'd be really curious to hear your suggestions. That being said, something just arrived. So I'm normally really paranoid with technology and if we've got new phones, devices, things like that, I normally don't even like to take them out of the box until they have got a screen protector on them. So all of our phones, iPads, whatever have these because they just help protect from scratches and screen smashes. But I also got this, which let's unbox it together because I don't know if it's any good. Can I do it with one hand? No, I cannot. Okay, two hands is easier. So in here we have got, this is a case um, which is quite good for taking it out and about. If you don't know what a switch is, I haven't just figured out what a switch is, but it's like a game console and you can use it handheld or you can use it tabletop or you can plug it in to the TV. Ah, oh, this is cool. Look, it's got little like controller covery thingies, some funny keychain thing, um, space to put, let's see what that is. Oh, that's like a prop up stand thing. A few people did say when I was asking for like switch advice that the middle of the road switch, which is the one that Bella's got, isn't brilliant at standing up by itself. So if that lives in the case for tabletop mode, that's kind of cool. This is like a back for it. So I've now got protection for the front, protection for the back, protection for the buttons. It's all good. There's also space to put, I guess, either SD cards or games. And we have gone for the digital option for games because if William then has one for his birthday, then we can share the games. So. I guess we'll stick all this on and um, see how that turns out. Oh, hang on, hold the phone. I've just found a glass screen protector in here. So I didn't actually need that one. I can send that back. <laughs> oh well, that's, that's a bonus. So before we sort the switch out, which is up here, plugged into the TV, just remembered that I need to sort these shelves. So these shelves went up in kind of, late September, maybe early October. And then suddenly we were decorating for Halloween and then it was Christmas. So I need some ideas what to do with these shelves. In probably one of the recent vlogs, I swapped the tent, which was over there, to the chair. And obviously they were just in different places. That doesn't really matter, but what do I put on the floating shelves? I've got one picture, thinking maybe like a dangly plant, maybe something on that hook. I did have wreaths on that hook, maybe fake flowers, it has to be something that won't die on me. But I'm open to ideas because I just don't know how to style them and I need something, something. The theme of the house is generally grey and pink, but 
what needs to go up there. Anyway, let's sort this out. Children are having a quick play in the playroom. William's just going to go on some game I downloaded. I downloaded a bunch of free ones, um, which I can do from like my account on the website. Um, a few of those. Well, the girls are quite happily decorating the case thing with the stickers it came with. They're more than happy with just playing with stickers. Zara, incidentally, is dressed, but has decided to wear a onesie on top, and that's fine. If that's what she wants to do. That's fine. So I'm going to take this little opportunity to organize this here box under my desk. Now the idea of this box is I was going to put a shiver handbag I was using that day into it and that never happens, the handbag just gets wedged in front of it because it's so full of stuff but it's just like a dumping box and I don't need a dumping box. This is like a man drawer, a Monica cupboard all in one. So I'm going to sort through all of this junk and I'm going to replace it with nice organized, ew that needs a clean actually, I found these <laughs> not being used for anything particular. Um, these were Ikea boxes, and two of those fit neatly into one of these. But I figured they will be easier to keep organized because they're in layers and I can put things like camera equipment in those that I can get to easily because I need to be able to get to that stuff easily. So I've probably got about four and a half minutes now before the children can no longer agree on what they're supposed to be doing together without some intervention. So let's get done. What a mess, what a mess. I have realised I have got about a million perfume samples in here that have been collecting. I do not know where all these have come from. I know I had one or two when I bought aftershave for my husband for Christmas, but goodness knows where the rest of them come from. I've got about a million half used packets of tissues. I mean, literally, look at them. Why do I need that many half used packets of tissues? They can go in a bag or they can go you know, they can go in my handbag and then they can be used. But I do not need half a used packets of tissues. Goodness sake, wait, what's the matter? Um, these, again, these are like for handbags. These can go under the stairs, ready to grab to put in a handbag. And then when they've been used, they can be disposed of. Not these half used bits of rubbish. The plan is for this is to put things like my camera gear. So my microphone, which goes on this camera over here. So this camera, has been just living on my desk. I don't use it all the time because I tend to use the camera I'm filming on, which also lives on my desk, but then I don't want my desk to be too cluttered. So if I can put this camera and the microphone into this box, that clears a bit of desk space. The other thing I have about a billion of are these external hard drive things. I have so many of them because all of the vlogs I do go onto Final Cut Pro, Pro libraries and I have two copies of everything because uh, these things are not that reliable and if one of them fails I've still got a backup copy so I've got gazillions of those so those can live in there as well I just want this to be kind of like a grab box of stuff I actually need you know like my vlogging equipment not a junk so let's see if we can sort this out into some sort of non-chaos <laughs>
tier boxes. The bottom tier has got these hard drives in them. Really, I need to use the label maker that I use to label them and to label them along the side so then I can store them that way and I can actually see what they all are. That would be very sensible. Then to make it two tiers deep, I've got a lid to go on that box and then this box will stack on top of it. So in here, I've got my big camera that I do use for sit down videos, but I don't use all the time. A spare light, various different tripods. This one I need now that I've taken my camera off my big tripod, but various other tripods that I use. The little case that goes over my little camera if I'm going out and about. That will be full of like SD cards and things when I go out and about. But these is just my like grab it and go with a little microphone in there vlogging kit and then yes i've got the a4 printed version of my planner this is a like a prototype version um i think i showed this before i'm hoping i've sorted this by the time this video goes out but basically this needs reformatting because all the pages on this side are lovely but all the pages on this side are kind of eating into the margin so one of my jobs this week while the children are off is to reformat that and get it uploaded properly because the digital version is available now on my blog. Although having said that, I'm still, I've still got a few little hiccups. The actual digital download at the moment, you can download the digital version of the planner. You can print it off. And if you know how to import it to a notes app yourself, that's fine. But I haven't physically put instructions of how to import them into a notes app. So a lot of people will know how to do that anyway, but some people might need help. So I need to do all that. But the other thing I need to do is currently, like I set it up through something called Shopify and I'm a little bit clueless. So obviously I reasonably tech savvy. I edit my videos and you know, do the like the front end of my blog. But whenever I've got to do anything kind of like back end techy, I totally spin out because I don't have to do it that much and I forget how to do things like that. So I've got to, verify my website through Google using some sort of piece of code. I've messed that up. Apparently they sent me a notification saying that's wrong. I've submitted the products to Google. They said I've done that wrong. And they keep asking me to, to verify who I am and verify my website so that they can get, send me payments. So at the moment people can pay for the product, but Shopify won't give me the money. <laughs> so anyone buying anything, money's just on hold in cyberspace somewhere so i've got to figure out how to do all that and that's all on my to-do list for this week but you know what i mean when i don't know if you have anything like this with your job there's some things you do so infrequently that you just have no idea how to do them and then if i had to do the same task again in a year's time i'd have no idea again <laughs> anyway but at least the decluttering is not looking too bad back to the decluttering so that can now go oh, in there when i've got two hands this is an empty box i like a nice empty box because you never know when you're gonna have other stuff sent to you to fill up with or just birthdays to shop for or whatever and pretty much all of this stuff belongs upstairs or under the stairs so belongs under the stairs it's an umbrella it does not belong in my office these are the children's little packs for when we go like out or travel they need to go in the playroom i've got all of this medication i've gathered together which needs to go in a medication box basically none of this stuff belongs in the office yet there it is there it is it's got to go. So I'm going to put this lot away and put that lot where it goes. And then that's a little 10 minute job. But this will make my life so much easier because I can grab all the stuff I need for working. another pretty cozy home day for us I still feel because the children haven't gone back to school that we're in that don't know what day it is kind of phase between Christmas and New Year even though I think a lot of the rest of the country went back to school yesterday today the girls are playing really nicely together for which I am grateful I am grateful they're playing nicely together so what I'm less grateful for however is my website appears to have broken. I'm always grateful when I get the heads up from you guys. Someone said, I know this is more you want to hear and I'm really sorry to be the one to tell you. So I looked into it and um, it's got this error that's coming up and I just don't know how to fix it. And I don't know if it's been hacked, it's been broken. I don't know if I've broken it in trying to, because in order to set the stuff up for my planner, for my Shopify shop, none of this stuff is your concern. I'm just explaining like why it's taking longer than it should. Because I know all you care about is 
can you buy it? Can you not buy it? Is it done? You know, is it done? But it's just so complicated and this is why it hasn't been done till now because I'm just not that competent at this techie behind the scenes stuff. So you've got to put a bit of code into the back end of the website. I don't understand. I, it's like, I can write on my blog. I can put pictures on my blog. I can like, I can drive the car, but I can't like fix the car. And I feel like that was my website. I can use it and I can add to it. But as soon as you go into like the nitty gritty taking part of the engine, I am totally out of my depth and lost. So I don't know if I've broken it, but all I know is right now it's broken. So I'm gonna try and fix it. I've got a company that I pay, because this happened. Let me know if you're one of the OG lot, actually, if you remember when my website got hacked and redirected to goodness knows what, a good few years ago, probably before I started back on YouTube. Um, I think I was just ranting about it on, on Instagram. But I think sometimes you just get sent these little speed bump things, you know, like things are going quite well. You're working towards this, like this plan is finally closer to actually being ready than ever and then the universe just goes I know let's just send you a little test like like the boss at the end of a video game level before you can level up and actually move on to the next stage so let me know if you've ever kind of experienced that you feel like you're so close to something then there's all these like hurdles to get over before you can get there but I just have to you know adopt the Marie Forleo everything is figure outable mantra from the book everything is figure outable it's just the best mantra because it just puts you in a mindset rather than like oh no what's happened but like, how can I figure it out? So that's what I've got to do. How can I figure it out? I'm going to get in touch with this company that can help me, that kind of help you with website breaks and hacks and all sorts. I can get in touch with them. And then maybe I just have to resign myself to the fact that I am not capable of sorting out this Shopify stuff by myself and figuring out who I can pay to help me. I think certain things when you're in business have to be outsourced and I think the very difficult thing about doing something self-employed and you will understand this if you are self-employed at all not just doing what I'm doing if you're a hairdresser or a builder or anything you're the marketing department and the payments department and the accounts department and the all the departments and um, so sometimes you just need to, to get a bit of help in in the form of like subcontracting like I wouldn't attempt to finish doing my accounts myself because I'd worry I'd get it wrong and get in trouble so maybe this is something I have to just bite the bullet and outsource in the meantime, while I am attempting to fix all things that are broken website-wise, the girls have set up a little video production corner where they are recreating, let me know if you've seen this. If you've got young children, you probably have. Have you seen, I think, is it called Come Play With Me? Yeah. yeah. Come Play With Me on YouTube. I think they've got something like 13 million subscribers. It's these little dolls, Elsia and Anya, so the the children of Elsa and Anna, and they go on all sorts of adventures. The children are making their own versions of it and they've set up a very elaborate set over here. It's looking rather fabulous, girls. They've got different scenes they're putting together. There are rather a lot of takes, <laughs> rather a lot of giggling, but it's very entertaining to watch. Well, after many, many hours of desperately trying to fix my website. I think it is now functioning again. I seem to be able to get it back. It was intermittently not working. It appears to be actually, you know, you click on it, the website opens, but all of the fonts have changed and I guess I'll take it. and I'll just have to <laughs> fix that. But I think the state of my website is a bit of a metaphor for the state of my health, my balance, as it's been the last year, as in not great. Basic like checkups and maintenance and things haven't been happening on my blog because I've been so busy. And I feel like that is like how it's been in life, you know? The children have been cared for and fed and basic work and stuff has happened, but certain things have been neglected. And in 2023, I need to spend a bit more time on maintaining things before they break like my blog and myself. Morning guys. Don't know why I'm saying that. It's literally the middle of the video, isn't it? But it's morning for me. <laughs> Children are still not back in school, so I still don't really know what day it is, but I know it's the morning. Anyway, I've had lots of questions sent in about my health, specifically my period issues and things that I have been facing. And um, I have had a few things happened through the month of December. It just didn't feel a very Christmassy thing to talk about at the time. So um, I thought I'd update you now. I can't remember exactly which bits I last shared in vlogs. I think I shared things over on Instagram, um, but I don't think I told you guys here. I was invited back to see another consultant. It kind of felt like they didn't even know I'd seen the first one. It felt all a bit all over the place. 
Um, the folder on this guy's desk, because obviously it was like all of my gynae health, all the pregnancies and everything was like that. So nobody could possibly go through all that. But he asked me for what was happening and at the time and, and still for that matter. The coil I had fitted end of the summer. And if you're new here, by the way, I've basically been having bonkers heavy periods since I stopped breastfeeding Zara. And that was around the time she turned two. She is about to turn six. So it's been going on for a really long time. And I'm talking like postnatal level bleeding, really like TMI, sorry, flooding place, really, really gross and really literally draining me. So they put a coil in to try and fix it back in the summer, the end of the summer of 2022. And it didn't fix it, but it did change it. So I went from like crazy heavy bleeding for 10 days a month to normal level of period bleeding most days of the month. I get more like maybe up to a week off bleeding rather than a week off bleeding. Anyway, that takes me back to seeing this consultant who just ugh, didn't seem very, what's the word? Nice, <laughs> understanding, like he liked women much. He kind of just sat back and went, so you're spotting quite a few days of the month. Where's the problem with that? I literally wanted to say, well, how is it with your uterus? What is, you know, how is it when you have periods? How do you experience your periods? Oh yeah, you don't have any because you're a bloke. He really um, did upset me. He, he felt like he was belittling the problem and even the uh, auxiliary nurse who was in the room looked uncomfortable and was squirming a bit because it was, it was a very uncomfortable situation. Anyway, um, he said that, that he was going to book me in for another scan. I said, well, look, whatever. The scanning people said that whatever they were going to find wasn't going to be found by a scan. That's a waste of time. But whatever, whatever you want me to do. He wanted me to go for a blood test and go for a scan. So I said, fine. Um, I left his office just feeling quite deflated, to be honest, and fobbed off. Definitely fobbed off. Um, and then I had a phone call. It was Well, I had a phone call saying I was going to have a telephone appointment. And then I had this actual telephone appointment with a really nice sounding consultant. And I think, I'm not exactly sure how the hierarchy works. I think the consultant that phoned me was like the higher up consultant than the other consultants I've been speaking to, from what I could gather. Anyway, he said, look, clearly, you know, this must be really miserable for you. The things we've tried aren't working. We need to do something about this. So he talked to me about doing, oh, hang on, the other consultant, I forgot this, the other consultant did offer me some tablets to potentially reduce the bleeding. I said, well, the thing is, then we wouldn't know if the coil was working to reduce the bleeding, because eventually maybe it'll settle down, or if the tablets were working. So isn't that silly? And he agreed with me that that was a bit silly. So anyway, that suggested him out the window. Anyway, back to the, the bigger consultant, the bigger consultant, more important consultant. So he said, look, this must be really, really miserable for you. So we can book you in, in the new year, so that's this year now, for, let me get this right, Oh, that's in Welsh. They send us everything in Welsh and English in, uh, in Wales. Um, the next line of treatment options, a hysteroscopy, an endometrial biopsy, and endometrial ablation. What I can gather, and bear in mind I'm no doctor, a hysteroscopy can be done under like mild sedation as opposed to a general anaesthetic where they go in and actually have a look internally to see what's going on. A biopsy would then take a sample to be tested to check what's going on. Um, but the endometrial ablation, I will need to have a general anaesthetic for. So he wanted to list me for that in January, which is this month, eek. Um, but I said that we have got a trip planned in February and he said he wouldn't want me getting on a plane and being out of the country if there were any potential complications or whatever after the procedure. So he said to leave it until March. So he's going to put me on his list for March. And he said, really, I don't need to like fully decide this until March. And obviously he said, if you come back to me in March and say, look, since we last spoke, I haven't had a period at all. The coil's done its job. But I don't want the, all the procedures, then cool. So I'm still keeping my fingers crossed for that. I am trying to like remember to log in my phone, period, not period, you know, symptoms and bleeding and things. And sadly, so far it's not gone away. I'm still kind of hoping it all just settles down and goes away so I don't have to have a procedure. But I'm thrilled that I'm at least being offered something after such a long time that will hopefully offer some relief. Now, endometrial ablation, I do need to read up on a bit more, but every time I start reading up on it, it makes me kind of cross my legs and squirm a bit and I have to stop looking at it. But it's basically where they blast out, from what I can gather, the lining of your womb, which then after that I would bleed for a period of, a period of about a month. That's what happened after I had all my babies, I bled for a month. 
and then after that nothing so that sounds amazing obviously the other um alternative is whipping everything out as in a hysterectomy but that would throw me into menopause and i don't feel i'm quite ready for that yet i am still in my 30s at least for most of this year i will be turning 40 later this year so i don't quite fancy the menopause yet if i could put it off a bit longer so this would hopefully fix the problem so i still haven't 100 percent decided what i'm going to do i'll have to have a general anesthetic it's technically a day procedure I will have to properly rest up for three days afterwards, you know, resting, no driving, no doing stuff. So that'll be challenging. Um, but if any of you have actually had hysteroscopy, I think, although I wouldn't have to go through that awake, so I don't know, if, I guess, but whether you've had one awake or like put to sleep, then I'd be interested to hear like how you were after that. Uh, and certainly if anyone, because I've never heard of anyone having endometrial ablation, I don't think, or never heard anyone discuss it, called that or whatever so if you have then please do let me know your experiences in the comments that would be really really helpful or if you don't feel comfortable sharing it here then just send me a little dm over on instagram but that's that's my update anyway so it's like no real news at the moment as in nothing's really changed i feel that finally wow i haven't had breakfast i'm so hungry um i'm feeling like finally i'm being offered solutions that might actually make the problem go away because i'm just fed up of feeling drained of blood and therefore of like my life energy and it'll be nice to to not have to deal with that almost every day of my life right now i am gonna go and eat something because my stomach is making terrible noises because i am sick and yes i am having one of my um exanti protein bars for breakfast this one's definitely my breakfast um bar of choice this isn't like a dieting thing for me it's more of a keep me fuller for longer so that i don't get a sugar crash and then mindlessly just go and reach for junk food because I'm having a sugar crash and need something immediately and then want to eat sweets and chocolate and stuff. I got in some really bad habits, definitely the end of last year, of really mindless snacking, eating because I'm stressed, eating because I'm bored, eating because I'm tired. And I just fe ended up feeling bleh because of it. I'm working from home. People ask, how do you manage not to snack working from home? And the last year was a real struggle. And I just don't feel good for it in the end. So when I eat other breakfasts if i just have toast or something i find i get that crash from it just from the bread these not so much so you can eat these as a meal replacement or you can eat as a snack to keep going i also like to eat a uh, pop um not this one so much but the one because i tend to like a plate and to chop this up to eat it you don't have to it's just like how i like to do it but um the bar kind the chocolate fudge bars especially if i know i'm going out say i'm going out shopping or something and i'm not i'm just going to be running around I'm not gonna have time to stop and eat something. I'll chuck one of those in my bag um, because it's better to eat one of those than to just pick up junk to eat. So I have decided that the only way to figure out what I want on these shelves in the playroom is through just trying stuff out. Trial and error is gonna be the way. And failing that, it's going to have to be spending a lot of time looking through things on Pinterest. But for now, I have found some things from around the house. I found some fake flowers from my bedroom, some fake flowers in the office, and some fake plants from the kitchen, and one from the lounge. Now, obviously, I don't especially want these to live in here permanently because they live in other places in the house, but it could be a good option for at least trying things out, and then I can either replace the ones from here or the ones put in there. Hanging heart, which I've got one of these in the lounge, and one of these that normally goes in the hall. Um, so that could maybe go up there, I don't know. So I'm just gonna try a few bits out and see how it looks. Not sure this is perfect, but I think something like this will do for now. This could maybe do with something else on it the grey heart thingy is fine it will do I don't know if that needs I don't know that's a bit much isn't it we don't need two of those maybe that needs another picture or something up there plant these are literally all Ikea these they're like you, set, you buy them separately um, that's like a plant that comes like that and then the outer pot so maybe I do need to do a trip to either 
the range or Ikea to get some more bits like this so I can swap some of these bits around the house but this kind of thing for just a non-seasonal kind of shelf styling what do we think guys this or if you've got any bright ideas really I'm really keen to hear them in the comments so videos I've got coming up for you include obviously more vlogs and things I'm gonna be doing more speed cleaning a lot more decluttering and organizing I'm really getting the the urge to do that now in the new year and really really get organized I'm gonna be doing a little bit about goal setting as well as some habits that I really want to take into 2023 and some habits I absolutely want to be leaving behind in the past and not taking into this new year so make sure you're subscribed with bell notifications on for all of that and lots more and let me know if there's any specific type of content that you want to see on my channel stuff you've seen before you want to come back or brand new stuff or whatever just just let me know in the comments what you like to see because it's always really nice to know because let's face it i want to bring you videos that you want to watch so thanks so much for watching make sure you like and subscribe and do the bell and all those lovely youtubey things so you don't miss any new videos from me i still see you guys soon bye